Good morning, Grace Church. It's kind of tough to look over here on this side. Having a, you know, this is an awesome time of the year, especially now because, you know, you know, confusion is not of God, correct? So this morning I woke up and I prayed really hard because I was really confused. I'll tell you why. I was confused because I didn't know which team to represent. So I went up, I went with the Diamondbacks, right? Because, you know, but then I also wanted to represent my Phoenix Suns, right? And then I still love the Cardinals, so I can't forget them, right? So just so you know, we're, we're, we're representing Arizona here. So. Checking birth certificates. I'll tell you a real wholesome story. A few years ago, it was a lot of years ago, my oldest, he was about seven or eight. Shaq was in Miami, you know, doing his thing over there. He's like, Dad, I want a Shaq jersey. I was like, all right, I'll get you one. And I'll throw it out on the curb with the rest of your stuff because in this house, we only wear Suns, Diamondbacks, and Cardinals. So he was, he was seven, so I don't think he's ever forgotten that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for... You're just an awesome God, Father. Thank you for allowing us breath in our lungs this morning, Father. Just being able to wake up, come to your house, Father, to worship your name, praise your name, Father, with no persecution, with no worries of endangerment, Father. We take that for granted in this, you know, sometimes, Father. We just come to you, Father, just submitting to your will this morning, submitting to your authority, Father. Father, knowing that we freely can worship you, Father. Lift our hands. Father, praise your name and lift your name high, Father. We thank you and love you for this freedom that we all get to exercise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs>
have more. Cause more of you, Lord, in me. And take out what is not of you. Cause more. Cause more of you, Lord. 
formed against us will ever, ever prosper. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. I want you to get your bread and I want you to say this. Heavenly Father, yes, I must decrease and let Jesus increase in my life. Thank you, Father. That Jesus was willing to give up his body as a living sacrifice on my behalf. He bore all my sickness. He bore all my pain. And I openly declare that I'm healed by Jesus' stripes. I walk in divine health. And you will satisfy me with a long healthy life in Jesus name Amen go ahead and partake
you get the cup? And I want you to say this, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I'm so grateful for the blood of Jesus. Jesus paid all the debt that I owed for my sins. I am free, not because of anything I've done, but because of what Jesus did for me. Freely by your grace, I'm forgiven. I'm delivered. I'm free. The devil can't touch me. I belong to Jesus. I'm his property. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. And in this temple, there's going to be praise. There's going to be glory. There's going to be honor. I will glorify you with this temple. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead. Partake. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and greet one another before you're seated. Go hug your neighbor. Say high five. Low five. Any five. Five dollar bill. Whatever. Amen. Jesus. Well, good morning, church. Good to see everybody here this morning. Isn't God good? Amen. It's awesome to be in God's presence, you know, to sense his presence and his love this morning. You know that song, uh, he ne God never fails and his love never fails. That's even speaking to you. Amen. God is speaking to those of you that are watching us online. We thank you for watching us and I pray that you feel God's love and you sense God's love there this morning because his love never fails. His love always is there for us no matter what. You know, even though that song is so true because it says, even though I make mistakes, his love never fails. Amen. Amen. And we all make them, but yet he still loves us. And so that's awesome. That's wonderful about our God. Amen. Well, if this is your first time at Grace Church, we just want to say welcome. We're thankful that you're here this morning. Uh, if you did receive a packet, please make sure you fill out the card, put it in the, in the buckets as it goes around. And if you didn't, then on your way out, make sure you get a packet and there's a gift in there we have for you. You can go to the cafe and enjoy either a pastry, a donut, or something to drink, okay? So we thank you for that. Um, also, just remind you, the cafe today is selling chili beans and cornbread and a drink for $7. I went and had a little taste of it, and it is yummy. So you, you want to make sure you get that. I don't. It still seemed like they had. I think the first service they sold a lot because that.
cooker was packed to the top and it's like this much left. So there's not a whole lot left. So they had a, a lot of people buy during the first service. Also, just want to remind you about the Harvest Fest this year. We are just doing it just for our kids here in house. And so we remind you to please bring your candies, okay? I know Pastor Ruby had mentioned the other day that we couldn't bring the chocolates. Well, we are accepting chocolates this year because they're not going to be outside. It's going yes. just to be indoors, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. He, we always give him the candy bag because, as you know, Pastor loves chocolate. So we always make sure we get him a candy bag. So, uh, And make sure you see your calendar for further announcements, okay? Uh, ushers, if you'd like to give this morning, just raise your hand. One of the ushers will serve you with an envelope. Amen. There's different forms of giving. We have online, we have the mobile, and we have in person if you'd like to give. Pretty soon we're going to have it on our app as well. Pastor Andrew and I are working on the app, trying to get that up and running so that way it's so easy. All you have to do is go to your phone, click on give, and boom, it's right there, okay? So, but it's still, you can still do it through the other way as well. In Matthew 6, 26, in the easy translation, it says, Think about the, the wild birds. They do not plant seeds in, in the ground, nor do they cut down plants to eat. They have no buildings to store food, but God, here it is, but God, amen? Your Father in heaven gives them food to eat. You are more valuable than these birds. And you know, so today you might be facing a financial situation, you might be you know, thinking, well, how am I going to make ends meet? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? No, you should be saying, how is God going to do that? Amen. Amen. Because God is your source. God is your supplier of your needs. This week I had two individuals share praise reports about how they didn't know how God was going to work out a certain bill situation that they had, a medical bill. Well, guess what? God paid the whole thing. Amen. 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 Another individual, God is faithful. They didn't know how they were going to pay their bills at the end of the week. They just trusted God. They gave their giving. And I told them, God is faithful. God will favor you. And God is faithful. So you this morning need to know that whatever you're facing, as we pray over your needs, you know the needs of your home. You speak God's favor and God's blessings over your home. Because you know what? You're more important than a bird. Amen. That's what God is telling us in this verse, in the scripture. He's saying that we're more important than the birds. So whatever financial need you have, you give it to God, and he, he's your daddy. He's going to take care of you. He's not going to fail you. He's not going to let you down. Amen? So let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of giving. We give to you because we love you, not because we have to. But we give because out of the overwhelming love that we have for you and because you died for us, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege of giving to you, Jesus. And as we give, we thank you that every need in our home is met. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that come to us, Father, because you do take care of us, Lord. And we thank you that our youth building is paid for in full, Lord God. We thank you for the rest of the finances coming in, for the cubicles and for whatever else pastor has in his heart to do, Lord God. We just thank you for that, Lord, because you have been faithful to us. In Jesus' name, amen. And you might say, but yeah, you're the church. No, God is not a respecter of persons. Go ahead and serve the people, amen? If God did it, you all know that we did not have not, we had, I don't remember if it was a couple of thousand dollars when we started, when the Lord told pastor to start the youth building, but he had wanted to have all the money in there. Uh, Monday, I have this here too. Um, that we, we didn't have all the money that we needed, but God said, go ahead and start. And so by faith, see, sometimes God asks you to do things by faith. He might ask you to tie that dollar by faith. He might ask you to give that $5 or maybe the seven instead of eating at the cafe today, you know, so the seven and, 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 you know, because guess what? You'll get a greater return than, than a little bit of gas. You know what I mean? Because they're chili beans, okay? So you, you might want to get a better return on that. You see what I'm saying? So, but God is faithful. He loves you and he will take care of you and your family, amen? So no need to stress. Just just trust God and he will take care of you, amen? Praise God. Pastor Menno. Only because it was chili beans, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I stepped on that thing by accident and I messed up your paw. To do that. What you do, what you do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Monday. <laughs> Pastor fixed it. 
I think I fixed it, yeah. I think I fixed it. OK, am I on? Can you, you can turn me up just a little bit so I don't have to yell? Well, yes, praise God. And we're ready, Harvey. We've got, got it going. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much. Just a couple of quick things, too, as far as the building. We are uh, getting so close. The hockey, uh, air hockey thing is in there, and the foosball's in there. In fact, uh, uh, John Ostrander was working on tile, and he brought his son, and everyone to take a break. They were playing foosball a little bit. And, <laughs> and then the guys at the end, after they tile, they were, they were playing a little game. But uh, uh, so the air hockey and all that's in there. We still got a few more. In fact, uh, they did the tile yesterday, and the plumber actually is right in here right, right now is putting the plumbing fixtures, uh, toilets, stuff like that. He's doing that today. We still got to believe, um, hopefully everything will go through this week, so hopefully we can get that fire hydrant in, because we can't move it until the fire hydrant is in. I got to get a certificate of occupancy, everybody sign off and everything, but we're close. I'm also waiting for a HVAC door that's taken over two months to get here. It's taking a long time. I got to install that. And then uh, this week we started installing some of our office uh, desks. And, but there's some other things we got to get. But it's, it's getting close. It's really getting really close. Just believe God with us. Favor with the city that they'll you know, get things through. And we'll get our C of O, Certificate of Occupancy. Even though we didn't get one over here because it was an addition. And, uh, uh, but here they're making us get a C of O. But you know, they change all the time. So anyway, but it's the favor of God. And uh, it's getting so close. I'm hoping that we can move in before the end of the month. That's what I'm shooting for to move in, but otherwise we'll probably have like a grand opening, invite everybody to come, especially you that have teenagers, come and check out the building, visit the building and, uh, um, and have a good time, just enjoy it. We got a beautiful worship area, a beautiful fellowship area, and the cross stands in between both. And uh, so it, it, it's gonna be a blessing. I, I believe you're gonna enjoy it, amen? Thank you for that. Thank you for your faithful giving. You, God's been so faithful. And uh, what, what's our final total? We've, well, it's not final. We're still raising a little bit more to, to finish all the stuff of the building. Do you have that, what, what our latest total is? I, I think we're at six. Well, as far as the youth building, I think it's $329,000 have been raised for the youth building. But total between the children, when we started in 2018, between the children and uh, the youth and and expanding this building, it, it, we have spent 642000 That's debt-free. We don't owe anybody anything. So, so that's a blessing. Amen? And, and we've been able to do that. So, nowadays, you can't buy a nice home for that price now, it seems like. So we've been able to do all that, you know, for, for the two buildings. So we've increased our square footage now to, what, close to 12000 I think, eleven to 12000 square feet that we have available. This here is, uh, with upstairs, about 5,000. Then you add 2,600 plus the breezeway and stuff. So, we, yeah, we can about 11 or so, 12,000 square feet. Praise God. God is faithful. Amen? Uh, listen, before I get in the Word, I, I shared this with the first, uh, first service, and I think it's so important. Those of you that didn't hear, there, uh, Israel was attacked yesterday uh, when, everybody, when they were at rest early in the morning at 6.30. And Israel was, was brutally attacked. This, this wasn't just firing rockets. They say about um, uh, 5,000 rockets have been fired at Israel. And, uh, but it, it's more than that. It's more than that. It wasn't just that. They came, they had drones that went and threw bombs. Um, they, they actually went in in trucks and everything with machine guns. Uh, there was a, there was a part, nature party that so, some young people were having not too far from the border of, of Gaza. And these guys went there and just started machining gun, shooting pe young people. Uh, I don't know what the full numbers are yet, but I know at least a minimum 250 or more died that were in that party, that were shot. They've, they've killed children, um, women, children, adults. Just, that's what terrorists do. You know, that Hamas is a terrorist group. And anybody that says they need their own land is, you, you don't understand. Their only goal is to destroy Israel. And again, people, this is, to Israel, what happened yesterday is like their 9-11. And let me add this, when people don't know this, actually there was Americans that have perished also. So you don't think it affects us? Americans were there. And I don't know what the total amount is, but there's Americans, probably people from all over the world. And you might say, Pastor, well, why is, why, what is so big? Hey, listen, Israel is the time clock of God. 
God, when he rose up Abraham, he says, I'm going to make a nation out of him. Why? Because he wanted to bring the seed through Abraham. He wanted to separate a nation that he would bring the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So the purpose of Israel, the only purpose of Israel was to bring the Messiah forth. And God made promises to Israel that one day your king is going to rule and reign forever. And guess what? Messiah is coming and he will rule and reign on earth as king of kings and lord of lords for over a thousand years. So, but here's the thing that people don't understand. When it comes to Bible prophecy, whatever happens in Israel, it affects the world. And whatever happens in the world, if there's a, a war or whatever, it affects Israel. Let me give you a great example. So here's some history things you need to learn. For example, in 1917, World War I, what was the result of World War I? Well, guess what? That's when the Balfour Agreement was made from England and Israel was able to get, you know, to receive land back in the, back in, in, in the promised land. So, so that's when they were started going back to the land. In 19, after World War I, there's a World War I, what happens? Israel goes back to the land. What happened with World War II? World War II happens, guess what? Is Holocaust, millions of Jews are killed, and they finally decide, hey, we need our own nation. So many Jews go back to their land, and Israel becomes a nation in 1948. That's World War II. Anytime there's any, anything that major, it affects Israel, and Israel affects us. Well, guess what? Uh, uh, the, 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 the Pentecost, when Israel actually started going back in the land in the early 1900s, but it was more official in 1917. Well, guess what? That's when the Pentecostal move of God happened in the earth, and, the, and so forth, and, and you see it happening all over 19, in, in, there in Los Angeles. And, uh, and then what happened? Then after World War II, what happened when Israel was affected and they became a nation? Well, guess what happened in the 40s and the 50s? That's when we had the, the, the healing revivals. There was a bunch of tents that were, uh, these, these uh, apostles and, and, and evangelists were going throughout all America, Oral Roberts, Brother Hagen, others were going throughout and doing these tent revivals. That was a result of World War II. And then when Israel... Uh, um, in, in fact, there was a three-day war in 1967 and that during a jubilee year. And guess what happened during that time? That's when the charismatic um, uh, movement happened in, in, in our area, where even people in denominational churches were getting spirit-filled. It was going through denominational churches, so the charismatic... So anytime something happens to Israel major, it affects the church too. Something spiritual happens or something. Well, guess what? The last big thing that's going... We're about to enter... Before we get to World War III, there's something that's going to happen. I think that this is just a prelude to the coming World War III, but I believe the rapture is going to happen. Why? Because we have to get out of here so that God can deal with the children of Israel for the last seven years of the 490 that he promised Daniel that he would deal with them to bring in everlasting righteousness and set up the Messiah. So it's time of Jacob's trouble, but at the same time, he's going to be judging the world for the rejection of Jesus. But God will not judge the world. Why? Because we're under the age of grace. That's why you haven't seen any major judgments from God right now. We're living under the year of Jubilee, the age of grace. When the age of grace runs out and we get raptured, then it's like God reverts back to the Old Testament to what? To finish what he needs to finish with the Jews as they await their Messiah. And when they see Jesus physically coming, they will be weeping and crying, the son whom they pierced. And the Bible says the spirit of grace will come upon them and they'll weep and cry and realize Jesus all along was their Messiah. So, so guess what? So these, this thing that happened in Israel, listen, we don't have the total number right now. Again, right now I've heard it, 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 it's probably getting close to a thousand now of people. This is women, children, civili civilians that were killed. Uh, in just the last day or so. And it hasn't finished. And I don't know if Israel is, Israel's like, it, it, that's it, it's war. And I don't know if they're either going to get, take over Gaza again, because remember, Israel gave it over to the Palestinians. Why? Because the United Nations was crying. Oh, you guys need to give them their own land. And what happens? They had it, when Israel was in control, there was peace. They, were, they had their own beautiful farm systems and everything. When they turned it over back to them, the terrorists came in and took a hold of it and took control. And therefore, we have all these troubles that you're seeing today. And, and we're hearing rumbling from the north. But here's the thing. A guy that I follow, can you put that telegram thing up for me? 
If you're interested in Middle East prophecy, there's a guy that I follow on the Telegram app. His name is Amir Safati, and he'll have things over and over of stuff that's happening in there, uh, all the stuff that's happening, and in, in, he'll show you things that are happening that you won't get in the news sometimes because they won't allow it. Amen. They'll push it down and so forth. So, so if you go there, you'll hear all these things he was reporting about the, the, the ones that were killed. He had pictures of children and stuff that's going on. Some stuff he will show, some stuff he won't show because it's too graphic. But, but it's stuff that the news won't tell you about. Amen. The stuff that's happening and, and so forth. Well, here's the latest thing he's been saying lately. Because something's not right. Because the Jews are good at protecting themselves. How in the world did these guys cross the borders and, and invade it through air and sea? And how did they do it? So he thinks, because usually we have, they have drones. They have, they have the Iron Dome that shoots everything down. But he's saying something, it sounds like something is up. And he's, he's, he's going to report later on on what it is. But he's saying that uh, the, the Kremlin might be involved in this and helping them to what? To, to be able to penetrate through the drones and everything what in other words, some hacking was going on in the systems from Russia and the Kremlin. Why? To weaken Israel. And isn't it something that Israel and Russia will end up becoming where Russia will eventually want to invade Israel? And that's World War III, Ezekiel 38, 39. But I believe we will be out of here before that happens. Why? Because when judgment starts falling, people, when the age of grace runs out, then you will see Old Testament stuff that you saw in the times of Moses. Judgment will begin falling uh, on the kingdom of the Antichrist and so forth as things begin to wrap up and so forth. So, what am I saying? We're going to pray for Israel because it's, their, it's God's time clock to history and what's about to happen. So we're living, man, we're living. I've told, when I started this church back in 2000, we started it. I told you from that beginning, I, I said, we are an end time church. I believe we will see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have no doubt about it. It's been 23 years, and the more, uh, the more convinced I am of it, that we are, we, we, we're the ones that are going to see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be, amen? So get ready, and, and, and we want to pray, because to them it was like their 9-11. And now I'm finding out that uh, many Americans were also killed in what happened over there. Amen? So Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up the children of Israel. Your people, Lord God. And Father, we just pray for all those who have been taken captive as kidnapped. I know some have already been rescued. But Father, we just pray for them. We ask that you would send the, the army, the military, all those that are, that, are, that are leading it, that they will be guided by your spirit. Lead them to the right place, Lord God, to be able to rescue these women and children and adults that have been held captive, kidnapped, in, uh, there in, in, in Hamas, in, in Gaza, that have been taken away from, from, from their just being at home, minding their own business. Lord, we ask for your angels to watch over. Angels of God, watch over these precious people. Protect them from all harm and from all evil. If you have to blast them, whatever you have to do to watch over them and take care of them and bring them back home safely. In Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we continue to pray for our leaders, Prime Minister Netanyahu and those in charge of the army and the military. We ask that you would give them supernatural wisdom and guidance on what they need to do to rescue the people and what they need to do to protect the people, the children of Israel, Father. For they are your timepiece. They are your people. And you still have a plan for them. And we just thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, so, but what do you, Pastor, what are you saying? Well, World War III is what? The return of Jesus coming back. Because I believe, we, you know, we, the, that the rapture will happen, then chaos is going to be out throughout the world, and that's where Russia and the others will go and invade. Why? There's nothing to hinder them anymore. U.S. will be nothing. Because there's so many Christians in the United States, they'll be gone, so the U.S. will be nothing. Amen. And so there will be no... Uh, uh, but how about the Battle of Mar Armageddon? What will that bring? The Battle of Armageddon at the end of the tribulation brings the physical return of Jesus Christ to, to the earth. And guess what? We're going to be coming with him, riding on white horses. It says the armies of God are going to ride with him. Amen? Well, Pastor, I don't know how to ride a white horse. <laughs> You'll know. Because anyway, you're going to have your glorified body and you can fall and get back on top. In other words, you can fly off, but you just coast, man. Amen? 
So listen, people, we're living in very interesting and exciting times, although we need to pray for Israel because, you know, that's, that breaks my heart to see these children and so forth that have been caught in this and are being hurt in this. And I can imagine, you know, and you know what they're doing? They take their bodies. You, you, you'll see it on there. They'll take their, they're taking the bodies of these women and, no, and they're just parading them down through Gaza and everything. You know, some stripped and everything. And just, I mean, they don't, they don't care. Amen. And these are the ones that the United Nations is like, oh, we need to give them their own land or whatever. Yeah, right. No, they're only go. And guess what? Iran is shouting death to Israel and death to the United States. Listen, people, wait, we need to wake up. We don't, we have, there's enemies. And listen, all this is happening. Why? Because the devil hates Israel. Hates the, why? Because the Messiah came through them. And he's trying to destroy them. So Bible prophecy will not be fulfilled. But listen, the children of Israel have been in existence since what? Way before Jesus came. And guess what? They've, they've tried to annihilate him in the Holocaust. They tried to annihilate him, but they keep existing. You can't annihilate the people of God. You can't kill the people of God. Why? They're a testimony that God keeps his word. Listen, the existence of Israel is proof that God's word is real. Why? Ezekiel 39... Ezekiel 37, they're going to come back to the land in the last days. It proves Ezekiel 38, and, and a nation will come against them. So the proof that God's word is true is the nation of Israel. It's just a proof that his word is truth, because God has kept his word to them. And guess what? If he keeps his word to them, he's going to keep his word to us, the church. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, let's move on. I, I, I'm ready to share the last teaching of uh, how many have been enjoying this series? Uh, living the 5G Strong Life series. Amen. We've been talking about that. And we, we've, we've, covered, we've covered grace. That's where it starts. It starts with God's love and grace. Getting, get, being, Paul told Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that I've shared with you, you know, give them to other people. Then we shared about the gift of righteousness that brings the goodness of God in your life. Be strong in that. See, God's good to you, not because of what you do, but because of what he did. Amen? And then we talked about glory, about the power. Everything that God does in your life is by his anointing. It's not by might. Everything that you saw God did here when, we, when all the money that we were believing for and the mountain of what we needed moved to this side. The bricks are gone now because, you know what I'm saying, God met the need. The mountain was moved and it is gone. And it's done not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. God will set you free by his spirit. God will deliver you by his spirit. He'll help you to do what he called you to do. And then we talked about gifts. God has given each and everybody here a gift. And, and, and we talked about those seven gifts that you were either born with, that the Father God gave you. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit Jesus gave ministry, but Father God gave uh, what I call grace gifts or, or manifest, you know, how, you're, how you look life, how you live your life, the way you live and operate your life. Some of you are minister or leadership. Some of you love to give. Some of you are server, servants. And so these are all life gifts that God gave to each one. And I believe he gave it to you before you were born, but you begin to operate it in a, in a greater way when you're saved. Amen? But then today, last week we started talking about how to be strong in God's gospel and how to be, be ashamed of testifying. Acts 20, uh, uh, 24 was our main scripture. And Paul says this, man, he was being persecuted everywhere he went. But he says, but none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus, which is what? To testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Amen? Paul says, I'm here to testify or be a witness to the gospel of the grace of God. Listen, I remember when I was reading this scripture one, one day, and that's the same thing that God was showing me, that I was called to what? To testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Amen? And so, so God wants us, what I did last week, I shared with you a, a way to share the gospel with people, especially if the Lord's coming soon. Again, Israel's a timetable. It, again, I'm, I, you know what? I'm believing that because of what happened over there, what, sometimes when something thing happens, some spiritual, just like it did the, the, the word of movement, the charismatic movement, well, guess what? Maybe what's happening in Israel today 
is going to affect the church where now there's going to be a great move of, of what? Revive, more of a evangelism in reaching the lost before the rapture trumpet sounds. I'm, I'm believing for that. Amen? So listen, so listen, we're, we're to share the gospel. Notice, uh, uh, notice here, I'm going to cover five areas real quick, but I want you to see this first one. Notice, a, I call it ABC's gospel salvation. Everybody have one that wanted one? I don't know if we have any more. Everybody, do we have any more? Raise your hands if you want one, because you can take this, and there's five, five ways you can share the gospel with people. Why? My job as a pastor is to equip you in, in the ministry. Amen? And so notice, the first one is ABC. Amen? ABC's. Hey, uh, Harvey, are we skipping? So if there's something we need to do to change that, because I'm noticing on this too, because what's going to cause it, you know, a skipping and stuff like that. Uh, I'm noticing on the live stream that we're skipping. Sorry about that if we're having technical difficulties. Um, but notice, notice the first one. It's called ABC's Gospel Salvation. A, admit, admit. Romans 3, 23 and 24. Admit what? First thing a, a people need is admit they're sinners, right? Notice, notice uh, go to, uh, uh, it's going to be in the LT up here. Verse, notice, everyone who has sinned, and we all fall what? Short of God's glorious standard. How many believe that? See, the first thing you got to get with people to understand, look, you understand you're a sinner, right? And if somebody tells you, oh, no, I've never done anything wrong, I said, man, you're the biggest liar, you're... Slap them a little bit anyway, you know. You're a sinner, man. You know it. Amen? You're right, for right now you're lying in the first place. <laughs> in the next verse, no, in the next verse. Yet, here's the good news. God in his what? Grace. What does he do? See, grace is free. You can't earn it. He freely makes us right in his sight. He did this what, through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. Amen. So remember I was telling last week that we're ambassadors. An ambassador can have a peace treaty. An ambassador can tell people, hey, I got great news for you. I come from the country of heaven. Amen. I'm an ambassador from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I come from heaven to tell you good news about a peace treaty that God has set up for you. Amen. Yes, you've sinned and come short of God's glory. So notice, admit what? You have sinned. Because you're a sinner, and yet God, by grace, makes you righteous through Jesus. And what's B? B is believe. Believe what? Romans 5.8, NLT says this, But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. When did Jesus die for you? While you were what? When you were goody, two-shoes? When you had it every, all together? No, He died for you when you were still a sinner. Not when you had it all together. And this deals with his death. We're not talking about his resurrection. He died for you when you were a sinner. How about his resurrection? Oh, we'll get into it in just a little bit. But notice uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Paul shares the simple gospel. He says, I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. And what did the Lord pass on to him? Christ died for our sins. Just as the scripture said. Verse 4. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. Now, we read, you know, sometimes we read things and we don't see that there's so much to this scripture. Why the third day? Why, why did Jesus have to be raised up on the third day? Well, guess what? We've been here for 2,000 years since Jesus died on the cross. Uh, Peter says, a day with the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. So guess what? Jesus has been gone two days. And when is he coming back? On the third day. Jesus died two days. He rose again on the third day. Well, guess what? We're in 2023. When did Jesus die on the cross? It was AD 33. So you could say we're 10 years away from 2,000 years. Why is the enemy saying so much about 2030? 2030, we got to form a world government, unite the world with climate change and all this thing by 2030. The devil must know something. Hello, the devil must know something. So we're in a window right now that could it be 
take seven years away from 2033. Uh, Pastor, are you trying to set a date? No. He says you won't know the day nor the hour. He didn't say you wouldn't know the season. Not the day nor the hour. We won't know the day or the hour. Can we know the season? I believe we can. We're in that season. He just told us. The, th the, scripture, the scripture is sharing something, but yet it's showing something else of the future just in that scripture right there. And so, so two days are gone, and, a, and morning's coming, glory to God. On the, on the morning of the Sunday, on early morning of what? Of the third millennium is when Jesus is coming. And so, and so we're in that window between 23, tw I believe 24, 25, or 26, where the rapture could possibly happen. And then you got the seven years leading to what? To the, you know, 20, 33, depending on, depending on what year Jesus actually died. Some believe it was 20, 30. <laughs> I mean, some believe it was 80, 30. So if it's 80, 30, the rapture could happen any time. If it's 80, 32, or 33, that's why it could be 33. That's why we have a window of between 23 and 26 or 27, that the rapture could possibly happen. Now, God could say, no, we're going to go all the way to 2032, then the rapture, I don't know. But I know this, we're in the season. Of the, what? The second day is about over. I said the second day is about over. The second day is about over. Morning's coming. Good morning, starshine. Morning's coming. I said morning's coming. Amen. The day is about to dawn, and the day star is going to arise and shine in your hearts, Peter says. It's exciting, it really is. Amen? So, so see, we're living, we're living in, that, in that time. Now, where was I? Verse, um, oh yeah, so believe what? B, Christ died for your sins, which makes, means you're forgiven. What else? That he was buried, which means he took your old life. He was raised, which means now he's, you've got resurrection life. He lives in you. If Jesus had not been risen from the dead, you know what that's proof of? That you're not forgiven. The fact that he rose from the dead is proof that God accepted his sacrifice on your behalf, therefore you're forgiven. And, and that's what the scripture says. If man, if his death brought reconciliation, how much more his resurrection is going to do? It's going to deliver us daily from sin's dominion. Come on now. How about C now? C, A is admit. Believe is what? Uh, believe Jesus died for your sins, was buried, rose again. Confess, or, or some say commit. Roman, let's look at Romans 10, 9, and 10. If, now listen, let me share this because I mentioned in the first group, and I think it's important because some people try to turn this into religious work. And Because I remember when I received the Lord Jesus in my life, I received him as my Savior in my bedroom back in 1982. But then somebody in church, yeah, but did you receive him as Lord of every area of your life? He has to be Lord of all, or he's Lord at not, not Lord at all. So I got worried. I, went, wait, 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 wait. I thought I received Jesus. See what I'm saying? So when is it, do you know that he's really Lord of all? How can you prove to me that he's Lord of every part of your life? And if we'll be honest with us, eh, there's some areas he's not totally Lord of. Come on. There's areas in your life that you, we just sang about it, more of you. And see, that's not talking about spiritually. That's more in our flesh and things that we need to, you know what I'm saying. But in the spirit, we're already righteous and holy. Normally I would say no, no on that song, but I know he's referring to what? In the natural, in things or whatever. But in the spirit, you're righteous. You're, you got Jesus righteous. In the spirit, you're holy. See what I'm saying? So, so that kind of, so I had to go back on, okay, Jesus, be Lord of every part of my life. But wait a minute. I called on the Lord Jesus Christ to be my Savior. And I knew I, had, I, knew I was saved, even though they were telling me that, you know, you have to make sure you're making Lord of I already knew in me I was saved. Why? Because after I received Jesus, after I received the Lord Jesus as my Savior, something happened in me. There was a change in me. I had all of a sudden the love of God was oozing through me. I had a love for people now. I had a love, like I said, for bugs too when I was in pest control. I had a love for anything. I had a love, you know, I, I just, love was just oozing out of me. And, and a love for God's word. Amen? 
Even in my little room right there, I turned it into a little Bible center. I had my own little desk. I had my Bibles there. I started recording cassette tapes of, 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 of teaching on end times or whatever and had, had my little shelf with, and I would sometimes give, you know, cassette to somebody here. I want you to hear about Jesus and whatever. So I, I, I started my Jesus soul winning. I had a Jesus soul winning ministry that was, you know, was my little ministry I had going. I was only 19, 20 years old. And so, you know what I'm saying? So, but really, and I did go back and whatever. Oh, I want to make sure, you know, because, and then, and then somebody would bring up, but did you mention the blood? Did you mention the blood? When I'm like, see, people start adding and adding and adding. Then you, are you saved? Come on, people. The Bible says, those that call on the name of the Lord shall be. Come on. So, I like what, what the NLT says. No, listen, listen, listen. Put it on the other. If you openly declare that what? That's the point. Listen, Jesus is Lord whether he's your Lord or not. But if you are bold enough to openly to declare Jesus is Lord, what are you saying? He is God. He is the one who came and the one who, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? And, and, and so if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Well, listen, I came out of the Catholic Church. I already believe that. As a Catholic, you know what I'm saying? We got Easter. So we always believe that Jesus rose from the dead. That's what we celebrate at Easter, right? Not the, not the little, you know, the eggs and everything or whatever. We, 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 you know, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. So I already believe, see, in other words, I, in my heart I already knew, I believed that Jesus, I was a good Catholic. I believe that, I wasn't actually a good Catholic. Anyway, but uh, I did believe that Jesus rose, <laughs> confession, <laughs> right? <laughs> that Jesus rose from the dead. But I, had, I didn't understand. I saw him hanging on that cross at the church, but I didn't understand what, I didn't really understand it. What did it mean? What does that mean to me? I didn't understand that I had to you know, receive him as my personal savior. I had to receive his gift of, of, of salvation and forgiveness in my life. So I did say, Lord, even though I didn't say, Lord Jesus, be Lord of every part of my life. I said, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Save me. I, I receive your gift of forgiveness for what you did for me. So, and I knew, you I don't care if you told me later, oh, you have to do this or that to be saved. Yeah, it's too late. It's too late, baby. Now it's too late because I know I am saved in the inside. <laughs> My old man died and now I'm righteous. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Stop it. Anyway, <laughs> and, so, and so you see what I'm saying? It was just too late. It's too late for, for you to convince me I'm not saved because I know something happened in me. I looked up in the sky, it was bluer. I looked at the grass, it looked greener. The fig tree was blossoming. Ooh, Jesus is coming back in time. <laughs> I had a fig tree on the outside. And I was reading, you know, Matthew 24. You see the fig tree blossoming? You know my return is near. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I was hyped up, man. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and so you see what I'm saying and so I knew you can convince me I knew something happened but yet religious people come and try to add stuff to Jesus it's Jesus alone that saves and your faith in Jesus that does it nothing else and not oh did I pray the perfect prayer come on come on how many know when you need when you're drowning you don't have time to confess you don't have time to say anything but Jesus. <laughs> or Jesus save me. Come on now. Right? And there we have a simple prayer there. Father God, I have sinned and I believe Jesus. You know, it's just a simple prayer. Acknowledging and receiving Jesus as your Savior. Now, oh, Pastor, you don't believe that Jesus should be Lord of... Of course I want Jesus more in my life. But that's a process of sanctification. That happens after you get saved. Amen? Oh, pastor, you don't believe that after you receive Jesus and if you sin, you could lose it. That, you're, that, that if you sin, you were, let's say you got an argument with your wife and you, and, and you got an accident and you didn't confess that sin, that you, you, will, you might not go to heaven. Are you serious? If it's based on that, we're in trouble. Because some of you have sinned some things and you haven't fessed up yet. So you wouldn't go to heaven either. If it's based on that, how can you be sure? No. It's either a gift or it isn't. It's either by grace or it's by works. You can't have both. 
Now, when you get saved by grace, works will be the result. Amen? Amen? See what I'm saying? So, it, so it, it's, it can't be one or the other. Amen? It is either by grace. Why? So that it might be by faith. Or it's either by law. So that it might be by works. Read Romans. He says, it's of grace that it might be by faith and not law. Why? Because if it's by law, you have to work for it. I get it, but people freak out, Pastor, but I know of people that are not living for God. They're not living for God. Well, here's my thing. Some people can be professors of salvation, but not possessors. How do you know, Pastor? Because if somebody's been, they say they knew the Lord, and they've been gone from church for 15 or 10 or 15 years, I really wonder if they ever got saved to begin with. Because I don't know about you, when I accepted Jesus in my life, and I would still, when I was still dealing with pornography and whatever, oh man, it didn't cause me to, oh, I can just go do whatever I want. No, I felt, and I would get back at Lord, you know, I admit it, I've messed up, and I get back in the Word. I still kept going to church. God's Spirit always drew me back to Him, not take me away. If I was truly, if you're truly saved, God's Spirit will draw you back. Not, it will chase you away from God. But here's the other thing. There's some, see, here's, uh, the best way to explain it is Abraham and Lot. Abraham represents the Christian that lives a righteous life. Lot represents the worldly Christian. Abraham was considered righteous by God, but guess what? Lot chose to go live in a worldly city, and he, he pitched his tent toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and, he, and, and in fact, Peter says it was tormenting his soul left and right. But that's Lot's decision. He was living a worldly life, and that was his decision, but yet, guess what? Guess what? When the angels came to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, they told Lot, you got to get out of here because we can't destroy this place until you are out of here. God would not destroy the righteous with the un... So, so Lot was still righteous even though he was what? Living like a worldly Christian. He was, you know what I'm saying? It represents, yes, can there be Christians that are saved and still will live worldly? Yes. No, so you'll see them, they'll come back to church. <laughs> I messed up, you know. And we accept them, we love them, and hey, it's okay. You came back to the right place. Amen? Amen? It's better that you came here than to go to the bar and, and tell that, pa that bartender pastor your problems. <laughs> See, the world has its own, the world has its own church. The world has its own pastor. It's the local bar, and poor, ba poor bartender, he gets to hear all the, you know, you picked the fine time to leave me, Lucille. Amen? And, uh, you know, my wife left me and, and all this stuff. And uh, See what I'm saying? So the, so the enemy, he has counterfeit churches. They're called clubs. They're called, the, the, you know, the, the bar or the saloon or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And you go up there, you, and guess what? The world serves counterfeit spirits. We here, we serve the Holy Spirit. We serve new wine. You can get drunk here if you want. Sometimes we do. Sometimes I feel like a nut. Sometimes I don't. You know what I'm saying? So, so see, see what I'm saying? The devil always counterfeits the reality. Here's the reality, amen? God has his church where you can get filled and encouraged and, and edified and bring your situations and your problems, not run away from it. See, that's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians, you Christians are carnal. Christians. They're still saved. He calls them saints in the beginning of the book. But he says they're living carnally. So can somebody be saved and still live a carnal life? Sad to say, that's a bad witness. Amen? Amen? So it's not like, you know, saved gets unsaved, saved get unsaved. Get... That's a crazy existence. You can't, you can't live that way. It'd be like me trying to live with my wife. Uh, today, I'm going to divorce you. The next day, oh, I'm, I'm going to love you this day. Oh, the next day, oh, you do that. I'm going to divorce you. I can't live like that. You got to take me for all that I am. <laughs> In all my, <laughs> my non-glory. <laughs> Amen? When she married me, she inherited my, my uh, Datsun King cab white pickup truck, my drums. That's about it. Anyway, <laughs> didn't have much. 
Amen? I didn't have much. But listen, within a year though, she was in her own house. God was faithful. Amen? You know, amen. Because we were, you know, she was living with mom and dad for a while, and she was like, says, Kitty, I eat? She wanted to leave? You build a house, I'm going to go to New Mexico. Tell me when you're done. But of course, my dad had a talk with her, and she realized, yeah, don't leave him by himself. Amen? Because why? You're, he's, he's building a house, and there's going to be another woman walking by, seeing him, seeing you, seeing him building, your, uh, building a house, and he's gonna, she's going to make, I see eyes at him. And like, Ooh! And you're not around. That's not good. So thank God for my dad. He's, he's so smart. He was so smart. Still smart. Anyway, so are you seeing that? I don't know. I got off track here a little bit, but it, I felt like that needed to be spoken. So, so, so th- listen, the fact that Paul says th- th- that they were living carnally and he still called them saints and righteous and the temple of the Holy Spirit, that's answers. Now, pastor, but are there somebody, now somebody that's gone for years, First of all, I'm wondering if they ever got saved. They might have heard religion and never got saved. Amen? Now, look at, look at this the next one real quick. Let me start. Uh, l- the simple grace message, I already shared that with you. Remember, 2 Corinthians five seventeen. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things are, are become new. And all things are of God. Amen? Because what? He's reconciled us to himself. Amen? So that's the simple, all things are of God who reconciles to himself. How? Through Jesus Christ. And he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. Remember I said last week, we're ambassadors, people. We are ambassadors of God. We, we're ambassadors of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we have a, a, a peace treaty between God and man. And we're supposed to tell him, that, and look at next verse. Here's the good news that I got to tell you. What? That God was in Christ. What was he doing? He was reconciling the world to himself. How? By not counting or imputing their trespasses to them. And he's committed to us this wor- word of reconciliation. See, we have a word, and it's the word of reconciliation. That's the simple gospel we're supposed to give people. Amen? So we talked about that, and, it, and it's good to share it. It's in the back of your notes. If you turn to the back side, you'll see it right there. The simple gospel message. And then the Roman road. I'm not going to spend too much time there because the Roman road, if you have more time to share with somebody, you can take the Roman road, just take the book of Romans and share these scriptures like Romans 3.23. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, 3.10 says, there is no, none righteous, no, not one. And then, and then Romans 5.12 talks about that through Adam, sin entered the world and sin passed through all men. See, that's where you can explain stuff like, listen, did, don't you know that it's because of Adam the sin entered the world? I, li- I like to use this illustration. It's like, you know, you take a master CD, and with that master CD, you can make copies. And so Adam was like our first master, and he, we became copies of Adam, so therefore uh, sin and Adam passed through all of us. So what God did is get rid of that master, and he brought a new master, the second Adam, that's Jesus Christ. And so guess what? Whatever's in the master gets passed on to the copies. So Jesus is righteousness. Jesus is holiness. Just like Adam's sin got passed on to us, Jesus is righteousness and holiness and freedom and peace got passed on to us. Because we're under a new master. Amen? Amen? Just like when I got my masters, I became master pastor. Amen? And then I got my doctor in, in ministry and theology, and so I guess you can call me Master Doctor Pastor. I don't care. It doesn't, I'm not into the titles and everything. Listen, and notice, the penalty of sin is separation from God. See, what people don't understand, you've got to explain to them, look, when you die, you don't die like a dog and you just lay there. You're a, you're a spirit being, and your spirit will live on. It's location that makes a difference. And so, and so the, the death is really, spiritual death is separation from God. Can you imagine being separated from God in a place where there's no peace, there's no joy, there's no, you can't sense God's love? Amen. I mean, and, and people say, well, I'm just going to go to hell and party with them all. No, you're not. There's no party going down there. There's no party going down. There's people, and we have an example in the Bible of somebody that Jesus talked about that did. And he says, please, Lazarus, warn my brothers about this place. Amen. 
In fact, he had asked, can you raise Lazarus from the dead to tell my brothers? And Jesus said, if they don't listen to Moses, or Abraham told him, if they don't listen to Moses, they're not going to listen to somebody even if they rise from the dead. That's why the word is so important, people. The word of God is so important. Amen? And then, and then Romans 5, 8 talks about that, that, that uh, Christ died for us when we were, what, still sinners. And then Romans 5, 10, uh, if you can put that one, Romans chapter 5, verse 10, it talks about his resurrection and how it brings justification. Amen? Romans 5, you have that one? Or no? Romans 5, yeah, I think he had put it in the first time. Verse 10. Yeah. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of... Listen, people, the death of Jesus reconciled us to God. How much more than having been reconciled, we, sh we shall be saved by his life or his, by his resurrection. So the death of Jesus brought us reconciliation. The resurrection of Jesus brings us, what, victory in life and, and overcoming life. And sin won't have dominion over us because we're not under law but under grace. Are you seeing that? And then Romans, the, the, what should you do? Call upon Jesus, will save you today. Romans 10, 13. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And what will be the result? Romans 5, 1. Romans 5, 1 talks about that having been justified by faith, we had now have what? Peace with God. Amen? And then Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore now no condo bondo to those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation to those who, who are in Christ Jesus. And then finally Romans 8, 38 and 39 says that I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come can be what? Verse 39 will be able to separate us or height or death nor any created thing can be separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, if you had time, you can share all these scriptures and show them that how you can be saved. But notice, there's real quick, do versus done. Remember I wrote that song? It's done, done, done. This is a good one about that. Do versus done. This is from Bill Hybels, not from me originally, even though I added a, a, a third point. Notice, do means what? Religion is spelled D-O. You only got a few minutes to share with somebody? You can share this. Did you know religion is spelled D-O? Because it consists of the things people do to try to somehow gain God's forgiveness and favor. But the problem is that you never know when you've done enough. It's like being a salesman uh, who knows he must meet a quota, but he never is being told what it is. You can never be sure what you've actually done when you've actually done enough. Worse yet, the Bible tells us in Romans 3.23 that we never can do enough. We'll always fall short of God's perfect standard. But Christianity is spelled done, D-O-N-E. Amen? Why? It, it is spelled D-O-N-E, which means that what we could never do for ourselves... Christ has already done for us. He lived the perfect life so we could that we could never live, and He willingly died on the cross to pay the penalty we owed for the wrongs that we've done. To become a real Christian is to humbly receive God's gift of forgiveness and commit to following His leadership. When we do that, He adopts us into His family and begins to change us from the inside out. And then I added point three there. You need to make a decision. Decide, considering all that Jesus has done for you, why not make a decision to call and receive him as your Lord and Savior? And the scripture is right there. But then, this last one is, can you put that uh, one verse PDF for me? That one verse? Uh, this one is the last, if you, if you only have a minute or two, this is just one verse you can share with them. And this is from the navigators. You can download this and they'll show you how to, how to read it out. So notice, it takes uh, Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So notice, our goal is, to, you know, God designed us to live for Him. He created us to live for Him, but we have a problem. What? We have sinned and come short of the glory. And there's wages. There's wages to be paid for sin. Now see, some people, when you talk about grace, and it's free and everything, they think, well, oh, you're one of those just whatever, kiss it, ask it, I'll do whatever, whatever. No, listen to me. Listen to me. Somebody still has to pay for the sin we committed. In other words, when God forgave our sins, he didn't just wink at it. It's like, it's okay. You guys are all right. It's okay. I'll let you pass. No, 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 no. The reason he forgives us is because his son paid for it. 
It wasn't a, oh, it's all right. I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm gonna... People see, people think that way, that God is acting in grace, like, oh, I'm not gonna, I, I just won't look at what you did. No, 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 no. The reason God legally forgives us is because our sins were legally paid for, and there's wages, but someone had to pay for them. But if we, if, if we don't accept him, then we have to pay for him, and that wage is death, spiritual death, separation from God. So therefore, God made a way. He's the bridge between this chasm, from, from this part of the canyon to the other side, to God, and that way is Jesus Christ. He is the bridge that brings us back to God. Why? Because Jesus offers his gift of salvation, and he's the gift of salvation that, what? Instead of death, we get eternal life. So you can take a few minutes right there and share the gospel with somebody. Amen? And see, and show them, notice, it's a gift. That's why it's by grace through faith. Otherwise, it would be by law through works. Okay. Let me, let me, let me go. Can you look up Romans chapter 4 real quick? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end. It's time. Because, because it is time. Not because there's a game. Listen, um, listen, I'm going to read from uh, uh, Romans 4.13 to end and all the way to about, um, yeah, through 16, 13 through 16. For the promise that Abraham would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed. Well, guess who that seed is? Who's, who's the seed? Hello? It's Jesus. His people, but Jesus. Listen. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. Notice, God's promise that he, would give, that he was given to Abraham wasn't through the law. The law hadn't even been given yet. So how could it be through the law? It wasn't through the law, listen, but through the righteousness of what? Listen, when you're in faith, God considered that the righteous thing to do. To be in faith is to do a righteous thing. Listen, verse 14, For if those who are of the law are heirs, then faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. In other, words, in other words, God promised us this. And if it's not by faith, then you can't promise it anymore. You have to work for it. You're under law now. The law brings... Why? Because here's the problem, people. And a lot of Christians miss it. Why? The law brings about wrath. Why? Because you can't keep it. And if you can't keep it, then guess what? The law will bring about wrath. For where there is no law, there's no... In fact, the only way it can be done is that there is no law. Why? So there'll be no transgression. I can be driving down the road. If there's no sign that says 45 miles per hour, I can go 50, 60, and I didn't break no law. Right? That's why some of you just drive down the road. Oh, I don't see that. Oh, I don't see that. Therefore, here, here's the key right here. Here it is. Look at, look at verse 16. Therefore, how is the promise of salvation and, and blessings of God for Abraham and us come? Therefore, it is of what? Faith. Why? That it might be according to the grace of God. It's his undeserved. In other words, God gives this to you by grace. Why? Because you receive it by faith. But if, if, but if it was, if God, if you were to work for it, then it'd have to be by law. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace. Why? So that the promise might be sure, what? To all the seed. Not only to those who are of the law, meaning the Jews, but also to those who are of the faith of what? We have faith just like Abraham, who is the father of us all. Father Abraham and many sons. Right? I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right up? Right? Listen, it's by faith, people. Are you seeing? Are you seeing it's by faith that it operates? Amen. Father, thank you so much for your word. And I pray, Father, that you would give us a greater desire to reach the lost. You know, that's my prayer every Monday when I'm praying for everybody. I'm praying, Father, give us a greater desire to reach the lost. You know, when I was young, I had such a, 
and, and again, I still have a desire for the lost, but I, it's just like when I was in the 20s, though, it was ext- And sometimes people in my church would take me wrong because I was so gung-ho about it. They're like, come down, you young whippersnapper. They should have never done that. Never, never put water in someone's fire for the lost. And I'm praying, Father, give us a greater desire for the lost. Because I know you love them. You were willing to give your son for them. So, Father, give our people a greater desire to reach the lost. Give us the same desire you have to reach the lost, that you would send your son. But I also pray, Father, give us creative ways to reach them. Give us ideas and way. That's why we're doing the live stream. That's why we're doing here with the youth building. We're thinking of creative ways to try to reach them. Father, I also pray though, and I, this is something you can pray every day. Give us boldness. Give us boldness to share your gospel. Help us not to be ashamed of the testimony of my Lord Jesus. Help us not to be ashamed to share your gospel. And if we get persecuted, that's okay. Give us boldness, Lord, to share your gospel with the lost. Because, Father, we believe you're coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. So, Father, we're living in days where we got to become more bolder to share. So please change our hearts. Give us a greater desire to reach the lost and the boldness to reach them, to share your gospel in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Father God. Now listen, I want to open up the front. If you need prayer this morning, I want the prayer team to come up. But if you're watching too, and if you never received Jesus, I want to lead you in a prayer since I've already preached the gospel in many different ways. I want to, since, I mean, Jesus could come anytime. The way things are going around the world, what's happening in Israel, the rapture could be very soon. So if you need prayer this morning, if you're here, Whatever it is, healing in your body, or you just need prayer, or you just want to sense God's love, you just need somebody to to encourage you, lift you up, pray with you, believe God with you, but but not the game, okay? Not the game, not the game, not the game. (laughs) Amen? So if you need prayer this morning, come on up as I lead in prayer for the, the people that may be watching, or if you're in here, you've never received Jesus. Let's pray this together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. I admit that I've sinned and fallen short of your glory. But I've heard the good news that Jesus died for my sins. Me, a sinner, he died for me. And he was buried and rose again on the third day as proof that you forgave me. Lord Jesus, I call on you now Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Change me. Make me a new creation. And from this day forward, I commit to live for you. Grace me every day to do your will, to fulfill your purpose and your plan for my life. I belong to you now. I'm yours. Thank you for saving me, Jesus. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Amen. If you did that, please let us know. Please call us, let us know, or email us, let us know at graceofaz.com. Let us know. Amen. Anybody else needed prayer before we dismiss? Go ahead and sing that if you want, brother. Amen. Anybody else that need prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Amen. As he sings, anybody else that needs prayer, come on up and receive. And those that are watching, thank you so much for watching and being with us this morning. Amen. Thank you.